Hallelujah. Can you all say the power of prayer? Please well, turn with me uh, uh, to book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 says pray without ceasing. Amen? Pray without ceasing. We just wanted to go a little detail into this when we say pray without ceasing. The measure of our prayer is the measure of our power, says Andrew Murray. The measure of your prayer is the measure of your power. Many a times we are powerless, many a times we are voiceless, many a times we are worthless because there is no worthiness of prayer in our lives, which is a pretty clear statement. And it also uh, says like this, if we in prayer, we are weak in everything and everywhere. Isn't it? If we in prayer, we are weak in everything and everywhere. Hallelujah. What a true statement that is. When you become a believer, there are three things you got to do. You got to believe and you got to live with that. The first one is prayer. The second one is fasting. The third one is giving. Without these three basic essentials, a believer, when I say believer, a person who is born again and be baptized and growing in a spiritual church, are growing in a church where God asked him to be. If you don't have these three natures in you, one is prayer, the other one is a fasting, the other one is a giving. But if you see these three things, out of these three things, two things I can say most of us are following. The first thing is prayer. I tell you, most of us will pray. When I will pray, we keep it aside. But we have the habit of praying. And many of us, if not all of us, many of us also have the habit of giving. We give tithes. We give offerings, we give thank offerings, we give, uh, 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 you know, sacrifice offerings. We do a lot of offerings. We give. But the most often neglected part of our life is fasting. Am I right? Amen? If I ask you, not to embarrass you, but to just recognize, how many days would have fasted whole last year? We have, that's what, we have, we're not blaming. The most often neglected part is fasting and it is fortunately or unfortunately the most powerful part of our life to empower God's power into our lives. Hallelujah. Through fasting and prayer you will empower your world. Hallelujah. Prayer and fasting should go hand in hand. Amen. So, uh, because in the Bible in the Bible we read more a command of prayer a command of giving but nevertheless, even though it's not given as a command, it's always attached to prayer, prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. That's what whenever you read Bible, Jesus said, when you fast, not if you fast. Jesus, you read all these Jesus things, when you fast, you'll be like this. When you fast, you'll be like this. When you fast. So when you fast is not an option, but it's also included in prayer. Hallelujah. So prayer, in my sense, prayer and fasting go as a package. Hallelujah. Prayer and fasting go together so that we can live a life that's worthy of calling. Hallelujah. We, we all know, we all pray. We all pray. Prayer, we know prayer is speaking to God. Prayer is bringing our uh, request to God. Prayer is uh, uh, seeking God's uh, uh, you know, kingship to our life. Uh, prayer is uh, you know, bringing the petition to God so that uh, uh, God can uh, you know, fill us back uh, with whatever we ask. Uh, uh, God is giving us back whatever uh, uh, we are praying. This is all good. We are all good. I am not uh, uh, against any of the things. But today, I wanted to show you a little bit deeper what actually we have to have this prayer in our life. Uh, 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 one of the quotations, it says, Prayer is essentially practicing the presence of God. Am I making it sense? Prayer is essentially practicing the presence of God. Oh, it's something strange. 
I don't know. Have, have you ever seen like this? Have you ever seen that? When you're going into prayer, in other words, you're going into presence of God. We don't even understand at times what it is. Don't pray unless the presence of God comes. Because without the presence of God, whatever you pray, it makes no sense to you. Without the presence of God, what do you pray? It is only a list of things that you're giving unto the Lord. Lord, I'm sending a list of things. I want this. I want this. I want this. I want this. Please send it. Okay, thank you. Amen. Prayer is not demanding things from the Lord. Prayer is not compelling things from the Lord. Prayer is not asking the Lord to do our will. But prayer is essentially practicing the presence of God. Hallelujah. When I kneel down, when you kneel down, you should feel the presence of God is empowering. When you kneel down, you feel really there is somebody with you talking and you're praying. Hallelujah. People of God, prayer is practicing the presence of God. This morning, I want this little church to understand. I'm not going to rush, but I'm going slow and detailed so that I want you to understand the concept of prayer. I take a series of messages on prayer and fasting so that the church will be empowered by the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of God's empowerment. You know what is the definition of prayer? The prayer definition is when you pray, you should pour out your heart. When you pray, you should realize God will answer. When you pray, always believe. When you pray, yield to God what God tells you. Amen? P-R-A-Y. Pray. The definition of P-R-A-Y is pour out your heart. Realize God will answer, always believe and yield to what God tells you to do. Hallelujah. You can have the definition of prayer. Again, I tell you the definition of prayer. Pouring your heart out, realizing God will answer my prayers. And also believe whatever ask the Lord will give it. And to the submit to the will of God, yielding. Hallelujah. When you come to the prayer, the place of prayer should be something different. When the place of prayer will become something different to you, then you will experience pouring out your heart. Then you will experience and realize God will answer your prayers. Then you will always believe, my God is a God who answers my prayer. Then you always yield to the will of God. You know, when is that? The place of prayer should be a shedding for you. Hallelujah. The prayer is a place of shedding some things out of your life. It has to shed and it has to wear something. What, what you are shedding out, it should be replaced by wearing something into your life. And prayer should be a place of relationship. Second thing is, prayer should be a place of relationship. And the third one is, prayer should be knowing place where you know the plans and the purpose of God. In prayer, God should reveal the plans and purpose of God into your life, into mine. And prayer is a place where you get the keys of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And prayer is a place where you transform your life. Hallelujah. These are the five places I want you to start and, and I want you to continue every week with you. Prayer is a place of shedding. Hallelujah. If the prayer is not the place of shedding, you can never pour out your heart. You cannot pour out your heart. When you pour out your heart, you know, when there's a burden in your life. Hallelujah. If you don't have a burden in your heart, you never pour out, isn't it? Am I right? You can't pour out your heart. There is some uh, uh, severe problem. Uh, there is something oppressing me. You know what I do? I cry. I pour out my heart. Lord, I'm in distress. Uh, Lord, I'm in agony. Lord, I'm in, uh, you know, I'm suffering and this and that. Because you pour out your heart only when there's a burden in your life. And that burden cannot come when you really enter into the presence of God. Hallelujah. Today, I'm going to share with you. Shedding. Prayer is a place of shedding. Hallelujah. What is that? Prayer is that. Place of shedding. What you got to shed? Let's see. What you got to say? You have to shedding. Prayer is a place of shedding. I said you have to shed your hypocrisy. I have to 
shed in the presence of God all my hypocrisy. I will shed in the presence of God all my carnality. I will shed in the presence of God all my pride. I must shed in the presence of God all the secret sins. I must shed in the presence of God all my lust and guilt and all kinds of stuff. I must shut up without that wearing in my life, without that uh, taking out of my life. I cannot reach the presence of God. Hallelujah. Prayer is a place of shedding. Something has to go out of your life in Jesus' name. Otherwise, you cannot serve God. And uh, not only that what you are shedding, but God will empower you to put on something that is uh, forgiveness. Hallelujah. The forgiveness will come upon you. The humility will come upon you. The humbleness will come upon you. The love will come upon you. The dependency on God come upon you. The uh, uh, gentleness of God come upon you. The kindness of God come upon you. As you shed that, God will replace it. Hallelujah. What an awesome thing it is. Prayer is a place of shedding. And this shedding cannot just happen to you like that. This shedding just cannot happen to you like that unless you really focus on what you are doing in your life. Hallelujah. That's what we go to seek fasting. I talk to the fasting later. What we are talking is a prayer. But the prayer and fasting will empower the world in the name of Jesus. People of God, you will see Psalm 51, verse 10 and 11 says, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a steadfast spirit within me, and do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore to me to the joy of salvation, and sustain me with a willing spirit. Hallelujah. David is praying, Lord, create a clean heart within me. Without clean heart, I cannot stand in the presence of God. And when I say the presence of God, I'm talking prayer. Prayer brings the presence of God. Prayer brings the presence of God. When you come into the presence of God, you've got to be empty in your life in Jesus' name. You've got to be completely poured out your heart. Take away all the guilt and shame and the secret sin and every kind of filth has to go out in Jesus' name. That's what he said. Lord, create a clean heart of God. Because the Bible says you accept a contrite and a broken spirit of God. Hallelujah. You are the Lord who sees a broken heart. You are the Lord who sees a contrite heart. Lord, create that kind of a heart in me. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus said. That he, a person takes an offering onto the altar. Do you remember that? The person takes an offering to the altar. Isn't it? When he takes an offering to the altar, he says, Man, you stop it here. First, if you are against someone, you read in Matthew, if you are against someone, leave your sacrifice here, go to the person and tell that man, I'm sorry, I've done something wrong because I'm going to the presence of God, I'm reaching the presence of God, I'm going to give my sacrifice unto the Lord, my God is a God who is a holy all the time, my God is a God who always sees my heart, my God is a God who rewards me according to the inner strength of my heart and my cleanness of my heart, so I'm not going to uh, uh, sacrifice it uh, with that you know hurt in my life what I do is I come to you and Jesus said first you leave the sacrifice say go and ask the apology uh, forgiveness or whatever is required finish that and come and do the sacrifice I accept it hallelujah Amen. people of God when you come to the presence of God let the guilt shut out let the unfaithfulness shut out of your life. Let your hatred shut out of your life. Let your guilt shut out of your life. Let your secrets shut out of your life. When you're shedding, 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 Lord, empower you. Hallelujah. With love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and all kinds of food of the Spirit will empower you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He also says that, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and share such as such as have a contrite spirit. Isn't it? Psalm 34, 18 says, and Psalm 51, 17 says, the sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite spirit. Oh, hallelujah. People of God. Second thing, we got to shed out our hypocrisy. Many people, we are in the church, we become very hypocrites at times. Hypocrisy means, I 
having something inside and showing something outside. That's what hypocrisy is. What Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 verses 5, 13, you go, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. People of God, you cannot come into the presence of God to pray with a heart of hypocrisy. And God says, I hate that. We got to shake our hypocrisy of our life. It's you and me, people of God, when we come to the prayer. If prayer is something, I'm not talking just a day prayer. It's just sending a request to God. Nothing more than that. Lord, I'm in trouble. They were me. Lord, I don't have a job. Give me a job. Lord, I don't have money. Give me money. Lord, I don't have a house. Give me a house. I don't have a car. Give me a car. My children should be happy. My husband should be happy. My wife should be happy. My family. This is what we know prayer. This is what we pray every day. But what I'm talking today, that is all good. I'm not denying it. But what I'm talking today, there is something more beyond what you can imagine when coming into the presence of God. Prayer is coming into the presence of God. Paul says, your life is a living sacrifice before the altar of God. Hallelujah. Let our lives be a life of sacrifice. We cannot uh, have any hypocrisy in our life. Isn't it? When you want to come into the presence of God, how do you have to come? You come as you are. God doesn't say anything. You come as you are. But when you come and ask the Lord, God will show you. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God will show you. My son, this is what is in your heart. No, no. You, didn't. you haven't forgotten that. You haven't forgiven this. This is the lust that's still hanging in your life. This is the problem you're still holding. This is unable to give up in your life. God will show you. The Spirit of God will show you. As he shows you, you have to shut off. Shut off. Shut off. And the most important thing is the carnality. When you come into the presence of God, you can't have carnality. You know what is carnality? The definition of carnality is world in the flesh. Do you know that? What is carnal? When you're not born again, let me teach you something. When you're not born again, you have only the soul and your body. That means you are a completely soulish being. You've got to understand this carefully. You are a completely soulish being before you are born. That means there is no spirit of God in you. There is no caution. There is nothing. What you think is right. What you say is right. What you do is right. That is before born again. But when you become born again, there is another thing called the spirit of God. When the Spirit of God bonds in you, you have a spirit, I mean, you, you, you have a spirit having your soul living in your body. That's what the definition of human. Human is a spirit being having a soul living in your body. So what happens is, when the Jesus is born into your life, when you become born again, you become spiritual. So, what we call is, those who are not born again, they are unspiritual. Those who are born again, they are spiritual. But what's happening is, among the spiritual people, they're becoming two kinds. One is carnal, one is spiritual. Did you get what I'm saying? One is carnal, other one is spiritual. Who is spiritual? Spiritual is the one who obeys the word of God. No doubt they are born again. And carnal is the one who is not obeying the word of God, but mostly obeying the word. He's born again. Is born again, but egg is obeying the word. So word in the flesh is karma. That's what Paul says, you karma. So, what God is telling is, you must take out it. Romans chapter 8, 7 and 8. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. There, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Those who are in the flesh, they cannot please God. Hallelujah. Your carnality has to shake. Your carnality has to, that means nothing of the world controls you. It's not easy. It's not easy, but it's more difficult as well. Amen? What, what else you have to shake in the prayer is pride. Pride is such a thing that eats up our life at times. For 
everything, we feel pride in so many aspects of life. Uh, maybe we, pro, we feel uh, 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 pride in all angles. But the Bible says in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, clothe yourself with humility towards one and another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Hallelujah. God opposes the pride and gives the spirit to the humble. Hallelujah. What an awesome thing it is. What an awesome thing. What kind of pride we have. I don't know. I, you, 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 you are good enough to assess your life, isn't it? We know what kind of pride we have. Sometimes, maybe because I have a status, or sometimes we have a, a good job, a good position, or sometimes I have money, or some I have knowledge, or I have wisdom, or I better than others. I mean, whatever you, whatever you take it from your sin, that is, that's hatred in the sight of God. Hallelujah! God cannot stand with the people who has got the pride. You and me. I don't know. If, if, when I talk to you, it is. It's talking to me as well. Pride is a horrible thing. You know what the Proverbs 8, 13 says? Fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Evil should not be seen in our life. Fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Amen? Isn't it? Pride and arrogancy. God will hate it. All the evil stuff. God will hate it. I don't know. You know what is evil stuff. I don't need to tell you. There's so much of evil stuff around us this morning. And in, in our lives. Isn't it? We don't need to tell. There's so much of evil. But are you allowing that evil to touch you? Or are you keeping the evil away from you? Hallelujah. We cannot come into the presence of God. With evil minds, evil thoughts and evil works. Hallelujah. That's what. There are three things I wanted to show you. Probably I'll conclude with this with this one more thing. Prayer is shedding. Prayer is the place where you are shedding things. What all you are shedding things? You are shedding pride. You are shedding carnality. You are shedding unforgiveness. You are shedding hatred. You are shedding lusts of the world. You are shedding everything. All the evil works that is not pleasing unto the Lord. And one thing I tell you. There are three things you got to die every day in your life. Amen? Can you just see that? There are three things you got to die every day in your life. The first thing is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. This is you can see in 1 John chapter 2 verse 16. 1 John chapter 2 verse 16, the Bible says the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. People of God, I tell you, it will destroy you. The three things you got to die every day in your life. Many times the world say you live to die, isn't it? You got to hear some statements I'm giving. The world says you got to live to die. You know what the Bible says? Die to live. Did you get me? Or the paradox let's say. People say you live man, whatever you live it, live it out. Only one life. Who cares? Live it out. Enjoy. Yes, you know. Do whatever you want. You're going to die after all. What are we going to die after all? And the Bible says, man, there is something else to live for you. Bigger than this. Better than this. Greater than this. Glorious than this. Unless you die today, you cannot live for tomorrow. Hallelujah. Die today. Unless you die, unless your corn is dying, it cannot bring forth the sheep. Unless the seed will die, unless the seed dies, it cannot bring forth the tree. Unless the seed goes into the earth, unless the seed buried, unless the seed completely not seen, you can't see something coming beautiful, not that nature. It's a different nature. That, that character is different character. Now that property is a different property in the name of Jesus. Die to live. There are three things you must die in the presence of God every day. That is, die for the lust of your flesh. I know you to explain to you. You know what is the lust of the flesh. And lust of the eyes, anything that is attractive. People of God, anything that is attractive. Anything that looks good, anything that pleases to eye, that causes every trouble right from the day one to the mother Eve. Isn't it? That's what exactly.
exactly you did. You was watching. Did it stop with watching? What God said? So what's wrong seeing? What's wrong seeing? That's what you did. Now you said not to touch, not to eat. Okay, let me go. Let's see. Going closer to that. She's inviting. The devil is inviting. Going closer. Lord, you said not to eat. But I'm coming close. Nothing wrong. I didn't disobey your word. Lord, you said not to eat. But I'm just only touching. Nothing wrong. You didn't say don't touch. You didn't say don't look. You didn't say don't come near to it. Sin will come like that to you. But I tell you, die to live. We may not see our worth in this life. But I tell you, I challenge you. You'll see your worth, not on this planet. You'll see your worth in a planet that's going to live. You are going to live in a planet. Heaven is nothing but a planet. Heaven is nothing but God's kingdom. Heaven is nothing but God's prosperity. And you have a mansion there. You we are Christians, brother. Yeah, we know once we die, we go to heaven. I don't know where it will be heaven. Which, uh, which, uh, you know, I, I don't know. We, we just go to heaven. But heaven is real. Heaven is real with all the things what God has placed for you. And God said, I am going to prepare a mansion for you. Hallelujah. He said mansion. He didn't say a house or a bungalow. He said, you know what is mansion? Have you ever seen mansions? If you go and see uh, any uh, king's palaces, they're called the mansions. Huge complexes. They're called mansions. And my God says, what he said? What God said? For me, what he prepares? Can you all talk to me, please? I want you, I want you to involve in this. What do you want? I, I don't want a poor shed there. I don't want to live in a poor shed there. I want to live in a mansion. If I don't live that life here, I can You, you, you got to understand what life you live for God is equal to what life you live in heaven. What life you live for God on the earth is equal to what life you live for God in heaven. Amen? So you got to aware. You got to aware the heavenly calling in your life. Hallelujah. And that doesn't mean that God will make you a pauper here. That doesn't mean that God will make you a beggar here. That doesn't mean that God will make you a, a useless fellow. No, 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 no. God will bless me when I was in this world and God will bless me when I was out this world. Hallelujah. God will never make me a pauper. God said, I'll make you the head, not the tail. Amen. I'll make you right on the high places of the earth. You are my child. You are the apple of my eye. Seek me first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the things will be given unto you in Jesus' name. So I won't like anything in the name of Jesus. But nevertheless, my heart will not be on the things of this world. My heart is connected because I practice to die every day to myself in Jesus' name. That will come when you come to the presence of God. Hallelujah. That will come when you come to the presence of God. People of God, this day, I'm just talking one of the prayer things. What I said today, what I said today, prayer is a place of shedding. And prayer is a place of giving. Hallelujah. What you shed, God will empower you with the new things. Hallelujah. If lust goes out that. Love comes in. If hatred goes out, forgiveness comes in. If evil thought goes out, godly thought comes in. If uh, 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 you know all kinds of uh, 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 pride goes out, humility comes in. Hallelujah! Can you all the people bearing the humility and the kindness and the love and the greatness of God when you come into the presence of God? Hallelujah! Prayer is a practicing the presence of God. In that we just saw. Uh, First one, prayer is a place of shedding and waiting for the glory of God. Let's all close.